Hey, I'm Josh Lupo. Oh, hey, I'm Emma Puglia. Scratch Course is about Icy Sparks by Gwen Rubio. Or as we say, Icy Sparks, 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 Icy Sparks by Rubio. Oh my god! I see sparks by Ruby. I see sparks by Ruby. Now I know what you're thinking. A book read by Oprah's book club has got to be good. We're here to confirm those rumors. I see sparks is about a ten-year-old girl with Tourette syndrome. Basically, meaning that she has jerks, her eyes pop out like this, and she croaks. How about we get into some analysis of the book? The young protagonist, Icy Sparks, starts developing these symptoms in early childhood and has to deal with many struggles during her adolescence. Some struggles which include kids calling her frog eyes and a cruel teacher who hits her with a ping pong paddle as punishment. And then Icy Sparks says some language that I'd uh, rather not repeat. This is a family friendly crash course. Now as the book begins, Icy Sparks on one of her numerous walks around the woods. She sees a young woman at the pond. Which we have conveniently behind us. Pond. Mammy Tillman's her name, and the reader gets the idea that from Icy that Mammy is pregnant. And throughout the entire novel, there are little passages and snippets of Mammy. She becomes a motif of Icy's struggle and control of her Tourette syndrome. With Mammy's secret bubbling in her thoughts constantly, Icy has a few more slip-ups where she loses control in the form of ticks. Kinda like this. <laughs> Further than the novel, Mammy's baby is uh, no longer around. And just as Icy's condition is parallel to Mammy's condition, Icy can't control her body anymore. It's around this point in the novel where her grandparents decide to send her to the Sunshine Building. And we decided to go inside. Yeah, it's kind of cold out here. Let's go. Now, the Sunshine Building, it's a children's asylum where they can go to get some help with their conditions. And ironically, it's not that sunny seeing as one of the hospital workers, Wilma, verbally abuses Icy and the fellow patients. At one point, Wilma even says to one of the children, However, there's a ray of sunshine in the Sunshine Building, and that's with another worker, Maisie, who is supportive and caring of all the children there. Long after Icy leaves the Sunshine Building, after a couple of weeks of drug-induced coma, she even keeps in correspondence with Maisie. Icy leaves the hospital and happily reunites with her family, and not so happily experiences the same or almost worse conditions from her classmates. For a while, she even thought she found her Prince Charming named P.V. Lawson. But after a scandal is seen in the woods, it turns out he's just a horny milk dud. Turns out that Maisie, pervy, I mean, P.V. Lawson... That frog who didn't turn into a prince when kissed. And her family and friends just end up being little distractions from the big problem. She still can't control herself. Her doctor tells her to substitute her urges into smaller forms, such as replacing a jerk with the tap of the finger. When you think about it, though, that's going to be really hard. I mean, ever done substitution in math? I, I mean, I can barely add 2 plus 2. <laughs> By the way, if our math teacher, Miss Roman, is watching this, I still haven't attempted to start studying matrixes for the next quiz. Whoops, sorry. Not sorry. It sounds like a personal problem. Just like Icy, who solves hers with a little help from her friends. No, I get by with a little help from my friends. Great transition. <laughs> Oops, I meant Miss Emily to be there. Now, all across the course of the novel, Icy bonds with Miss Emily because they both stand out in their humdrum little town. One 350 pounds. Not easy. And the other completely unable to control her urges. They both are outsiders, but the only pure of heart characters in the novel. Soon, Icy's grandmother introduces both Miss Emily and her granddaughter to a revivalist type of church. Why are we outside, Josh? We're outside because the weather decided to be nicer. Now, Icy starts singing in the second half of the novel, and it sort of becomes Icy's rock. It's the one thing that makes her feel normal. Human, even. When combining singing in the religious setting, Icy has the ability to control her tics and has the ability to let it go. Let it go! 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 Let it
Icy begins to feel hope. I admit I teared up a little bit. Well, either way, Icy's struggle teaches the reader to push past their problems and find whatever makes them happy. Recognizing your difficulties is half the battle. Getting past them is the other half. And that's the lesson Rubio teaches. We out! Deuces. Aw oh, man, my chair didn't flip! Go back and flip it. I'll just push it down. Just go flip it.